the Russian aggression succeeds, we will see more and more of these, this kind of aggression all over the world. You know, since 1945, it became unacceptable for one country to simply invade a weaker nation and obliterate it from the face of the map, which is what Putin is trying to do. If Putin succeeds, you know, there are countries all over the world and tyrants all over the world watching this to see what will happen. If he succeeds, we will see more and more of it and we will enter a new dark era in history, which everybody will feel. Putin succeeds, you will, we will see defense budgets around the whole world skyrocket. We already saw Germany doubling its military budget in a day. And this money will come from healthcare, from education. The money that should go to teachers and doctors will go to tanks and to airplanes. And everybody will feel it. We will also lose the potential to deal with the main problems of humankind, like climate change and like the rise of artificial intelligence. Because how can you reach an agreement on fighting climate change or on limiting, limiting artificial intelligence when countries are trying to destroy each other? That he loses and that countries around the world realize this is not the way to develop. If you want to become a powerful nation, a respected nation, you should invest in the education and healthcare of your citizens so they became more educated, they build, you know, high-tech industries and things like that. You don't invest in tanks to become a great nation. Wars were destructive, but they couldn't destroy humanity. Now, with nuclear weapons and with more and more new weapons coming from areas like artificial intelligence, if war is really part of human nature, then we are doomed. Then in a couple of decades, there will not be any human beings left. You know, previous conquerors in history, Genghis, Genghis Khan or the Mughals or, or people like that, they could kill millions, they couldn't destroy humanity. If we don't find a way to end war, then war will end us. We will not survive this century if we don't find a way to overcome war. When you say that war is natural, you are excusing criminals. Because then it's not their fault. It's not Putin's fault that there is a war. It's the fault of human nature. And this is unacceptable. Humans have proven that they are able to make better decisions. The period of peace that we saw not just in Europe, but in most of the world in recent generations was not a fantasy, it was real. And this is why I started with budgets, not with poems. Look in the budgets and you will see how real the peace was. And if we now accept war as just natural, it means that military budgets all over the world will again skyrocket and people will say, well, what do you want? War is part of human nature, so we have to prepare for it. And this is not true. There were periods of peace in history. There were periods of war in history. Yes, war is a possibility, but it is not an inevitability. Ultimately, war is decided upon by humans. It doesn't come from the laws of nature. Then you double your military budget. And then your neighbors become afraid, they double their military budgets. And then you triple your budget, and they triple your budget. And this is a race to the bottom. I can't predict the future. It could end right now if Putin gives the order, because this is a war of one person only. This isn't Russia's war. It isn't the war of the Russian people. They don't want it. There is just one person in the whole world that wants this war. And this is Putin, and he can stop it immediately. I, if he doesn't, it can last for months and years. Again, he can conquer the whole country, but the war will continue for years. He will never be able to actually absorb it. It also depends to a large extent on the reaction of other countries. Countries whether in Europe or whether in Asia, like India. And you know, people talk about the security interests of Russia. Nobody was threatening Russia when this war erupted. If Russia had concerns, it, they could be discussed peacefully. 
you know, the Germans were not about to invade, the French were not about to, to invade. It, it was his decision. Russia is actually a weak country. People think that Russia is like the Soviet Union. It isn't. It's much, much weaker. It's not one of the ten largest economies. The Russian economy is actually smaller than the economy of Italy or of South Korea. You know, Russia has a, a, a GDP of 1.6 trillion dollars a year. Europe combined has more than 20 trillions. If Europe and the world unite against Russia, Putin cannot prevail. I'll say another thing about it. You know, the whole Russian economy is built just on gas and oil. And it's like a, it's like a gas station with nukes. If the world unites to, or if even just Europe, unites to create a green Manhattan project to replace oil and gas with alternative energy, the Putin regime is finished. Putin is like many other dictators, not just Hitler. That when he builds this lie in his head, nobody around him is brave enough to confront him. A dictator usually has so much power that the people around him are afraid to contradict him. So even when he says completely ridiculous thing, everybody tells him, yes, 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 you're absolutely right, you're a genius. And this is why he embarked on this war, assuming completely false things, such as that Ukraine is not a nation and that the Ukrainians will not resist. The fate of the whole of humanity is at stake. It's not just the responsibility of the, United, of, of, of the EU or of the US to do something. All countries, including my country of Israel, including India. India is a very important country in this respect, not only because of its ties with Russia and because of its economic uh, uh, power. It's also, it sees itself as a spiritual leader of the world, as a world guru. And this is the time that we expect, you know, when you see a crime, you want to hear from spiritual leaders about it. Uh, I know that it is difficult in terms of Indian interests, but this is why there is a difference between interests and morality. Sometimes you need to do the right thing, even if it's not in your cold calculated interest to do it. This is the meaning of morality. Otherwise, it's, it's just interests. And you know, if, if, if your friend uh, kills somebody and you don't say anything, what does it mean about you?